that I'm at an all time. <laughs> Hi guys, I was just, just getting ready to film my review of this car. So great timing, thanks for coming. Stick around. You should be thinking, this car being German, it should be over-engineered and practical and sensible all the time. But honestly, it's not. <laughs> For example, the doors don't close properly. And that, be and that is because the cabin is too airtight. If you want to close the door, you create an overpressure in the cabin and you can't close the door. Unless you roll the window a bit down. Yeah, not really German, is it? Next thing, how about the fact that this four-seater car from Mercedes, a sensible German auto manufacturer, doesn't have any cup doesn't have any cup holders? That's right. It doesn't have any cup holders. Well, except for actually, it's a lie because it has some. It has two, put them back, and they're hidden. So I'm going to show you them now. Okay, so we are now in the back seat of the car, and you could be thinking that the cup holes should be somewhere around here. But honestly, they're not. It's an ashtray. Yeah. The car, got, the car has two ashtrays for four, person, for four people, but only one cup holder. No, the cup holder was actually inside of this armrest, hidden. You see, you put the armrest down, click this thing, pull on this thing, and you have two cup holders in a four-seater car. Well done, Germany. Another interesting thing about this car is the first aid kit. Uh, in most cars, first aid kits are in the trunk. Which doesn't really make sense because if you look at the um, at the statistics of, of accidents, usually cars get rear-ended, and chances are after that you can't open your trunk because it's going to be deformed. And also here in Germany, if you're an accident, you had an accident, you are not allowed to move your car. So if you have another car stuck in your rear end, you are not allowed to move them apart so you can get to your first aid kit. Because of that, Mercedes put it somewhere else. They actually put it right here, which makes sense. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show it to you now. So you open this flap right here, which is a bit hidden, but it's got, but it has that green cross on it, so you know it's a first aid kit. 
you open it and your first aid kit is not is beneath it. You pull it out. And once again, nothing special, just a first aid kit, right? Well, you would be wrong because first of all, it has a Mercedes-Benz logo on it, which obviously makes it more expensive. Second of all, it's well thought out actually. You flap it open, and the first thing you you are presented you are presented with are two pairs of gloves, which makes sense because when are you going to be alone in an accident? Chances are you have to patch yourself up and then someone else. So you have to be secure. You have to be. You have to have gloves, right? So it gives you two, which is brilliant. And no other manufacturer does that, which is kind of, kind of, well, nonsensical actually. The rest is all standard stuff. Your uh, your chain of um, from your emergency emergencies, your emergency chain stuff, and some plastics and stuff like that. That's all standard stuff. But those two gloves, those might make the inclusion that are that is sensible. But you know what? You don't want to use this first aid kit because there's a second one that's even better in the trunk, and I'm going to show you that now. But like I said, that's not the first aid kit you want to use. No, that would be this one. You open the trunk, then you open this panel right here, and there's your first aid kit you want to use. Because obviously that cures everything, even freaking death. So yeah, don't bother with the other one, just go for that one. And then there's the fact you need to break your fingers in order to change your, change your freaking light bulb in front. First of all, you obviously have to know how to open the bonnet, which I'm going to show you now. You reach for a lever in the driver's footwell to open the hood down here. And after you somehow manage to do that, which is obviously nearly impossible, you have to somehow cram your hand in between these two parts, twist it, break it in the process, and then somehow change your freaking light bulb. That today is more or less common, but 20 years ago that was completely stupid, and it still is. In fact, let me show you that, clo that door closing thing, because it's truly stupid. You see the light is still on, because the door is open. I'm going to open it again, try and pull it shut, and this time it worked, but usually it doesn't. Still open. Still open. So you really have to pull hard on it in order to close it, which is completely stupid. Or you could just lower the window a bit and then close it normally. But who thinks about that every time he gets, in, gets inside his car? But then there also is the, the truly good stuff, like the ride quality and... And then there is also the, the And then there is also the truly good stuff like the ride quality and in general the way it moves because it's it's just so elegant in its movements I guess is, is would be a right way to describe it. It's subtle, it's not it's not nimble at all, it's not a sports car at all, and, and it's not even trying to be one. And I honestly like it about like that about it. Uh, secondly, it's very well insulated inside this cabin, but you still hear the engine and the transmission, which is weird, but I like it in a way. So yeah, a weird little car from Germany. It's especially weird for a German car. Honestly, it could almost be an English car. Yeah, it could almost be an English car. But all in all, I like it, I really do. And I really think it's totally underrated. And on a side note, 
in the case of this one being uh, made in 1998 it's gonna become a classic car here in Germany in five years and then it's gonna cost you like nothing it's gonna be like $40 a year to run it so buy one now store it away for five years and have a great driving extremely reliable extremely cheap car for every day that's the plan go with it all of you and that pretty much concludes this video um, thanks for watching guys and please leave a comment maybe a like please subscribe and honestly I don't really like to say these things but they seem to be working because now that I started to do it I've got more comments and more likes and more subscribers but well whatever um, if you decide to do so thank you for it and please tell me which cars on your mind hope to see you next time thank you one thing I completely forgot to mention is um, visibility because it's great and honestly I've never never really understood that understood these things and I thought it was a pretentious asshole thing but that star in front is great for visibility because it acts like the like the freaking side of a gun you can just point it wherever you want to go and you can be exactly where you want to go it's great um, visibility in back is is okay-ish but it's not really that great because of the uh, round shape of the trunk you can't really see where it ends but, but the visibility in front and the sides is freaking phenomenal. That I'm at an all time. <laughs>